Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a walk around uh, the riverside because it is time for the annual water festival, uh, Banam Tuk as it's called here. And uh, I thought I, and uh, most of it takes away around the riverside, so I thought I'd take a walk around there. We'll do a loop, as they say, and uh, we'll see what we can see. Uh, but first, as always, I want to remind you that I have books for sale. And uh, you see the books on your screen there. Uh, you can buy all those at the link in the description. Uh, most of them are only a dollar each. And if you wanted to buy all five, they would be nine dollars. So uh, go ahead and check that out. But if you want to help support the channel directly and get a bonus in return, well, that's real easy, too. I have links down below for PayPal and Ko-Fi.com. And if you donate at least $5 to either of those places and leave me your email address, I will send you, through your email, copies of all five of my books. So you save $4, and everybody gets happy, happy. <laughs> that sounds like a deal to me. Hey, it's, a, it's that time of year, you know, the giving season. So don't be afraid to spread a little love this way. We really appreciate our supporters, and uh, we can always use it. All right, let's go take a look and see what's happening for Bonham Tuke. All right, well, I came down here in the early afternoon for two reasons. Uh, first, I didn't want there to be uh, too many people, <laughs> so I wasn't stuck in one place on my phone. Uh, and second, it looked like it was going to rain, or it was supposed to rain later that afternoon, and I didn't want to be caught in a rainstorm. And I came down here thinking, like I said, uh, there won't be that many people, because it's early afternoon, and they probably have other things to do, and they're probably getting ready for the big party later, later tonight, right? <laughs> but as you can see, when I started walking, uh, yeah, it's just uh, traffic everywhere, people everywhere. Uh, they didn't have any boat races going on, which is a big attraction uh, for this festival every year. But still, they had uh, uh, other, I don't know, kind of uh, events set up down there. They have balloons, of course. They got uh, things hanging all from the trees. And they got the trees wrapped in some colorful uh, uh, paper. Or maybe not paper. Whatever it is. They, they got the trees all wrapped up. So yeah, I was kind of surprised. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look, you know, like it's packed <laughs> this time of the day. But it's uh, more, way more people than what I anticipated uh, being down there for, for this early in the day. But there you go. Yeah, you can see they got something wrapped around the trees there. Various colors. I believe... Those are not only for aesthetics, but to designate different, because uh, during the boat races, of course, you have different colored boats representing different teams and organizations, and I believe that lets them know where they're supposed to go to to launch their boats. I think that has something to do with it. I think the color coordinated. Uh, you know, during during festivals like this, generally. Uh, the Cambodia or the uh, American Embassy in Cambodia will will tell you to be careful. Lots of crowds, uh, lots of petty crime taking place, pickpockets and people purse snatchings and uh, all that. But uh, th that wasn't really an issue this year. I saw a lot of uh, a lot of security down there, a lot of police officers. They looked like they had their eye on things. Uh, again, like I've said in other videos. <coughs> Whether it was during the day like this or even at night when the crowds are, are much, much thicker and uh, packed, to the, packed to the brim down there. I never once felt like uh, I shouldn't take out my phone because somebody's going to steal it. Or, I, you know, i got to watch my back all the time. They've really uh, beefed up their security for these festivals. Uh, added a bunch more personnel and... Uh, they, they, they they do a lot of uh, uh, protecting and serving, I guess you can say, during this time of year. It's hard to ever see a cop sometimes <laughs> around Cambodia. Uh, 
unless it's down by Pub Street, but but they're out in force for this festival. Letting people know it's okay to come down here. Uh, there's, of course, always a bunch of vendors set up uh, and food. They didn't really have a lot uh, when I went down there, but you got to figure like most of the party takes place at night. Like there's concerts and there's uh, the boat races and there's VIPs coming in. They have their own VIP stand up to set up along the river for all the very important people, whoever they might be. <clears throat> and of course, at night, man, you're just going to have, you know, elbow to elbow people. Tons and tons of uh, the food stalls are all going to be open. Uh, but they still have enough down here where you can... Uh, you know, you can get something to eat, you can get something to drink. And uh, like I said, they do have a couple of events going on. One of them is pretty pretty funny. We'll be talking about that one here in a minute. <laughs> it's pretty... <clears throat> because uh, something like that back back where I come from, uh, people would have been outraged. And they would have... <laughs> people would have sent letters to the editors. And then people would have been debating about it on the news and just making a big deal out of it. And I thought, but I thought it was pretty cute. I thought it was pretty funny. And we'll see that here in just a minute. But yeah, the further we get down there by the river, you can tell the, the, the more crowds there are. Because not only that's where the events are taking place, but uh, that's where a lot of the vendors set up. And you should, uh, and I tried to get as close as I could here, but there was a very slippery, muddy slope there. I wanted to go and get uh, like really up close in the boats and then I noticed first people were taking their siestas in the boats <laughs> there, there were some people just uh, sleeping in there so that's not a good idea and second man that that muddy shore was uh, I didn't want to take a take a header down into that water that's for sure yeah but one thing uh, you might not know or maybe you do about Cambodia it really is a a, a foody kind of country. Uh, wherever you go, you're you, you're gonna have food. People love their food here, especially the local food. That's why you'll be you'll just be walking along uh, a, a dirt path you found, maybe driving along or walking along. You don't see anything on either side except woods and 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 nature and things. And right in the middle, somebody will set up a food stand. <laughs> They'll be selling noodles or rice or. Uh, selling uh, beverages or something, right? And it doesn't seem to be anybody living around there. There doesn't seem to be. I mean, who are their customers? I don't know, but there they are, and they're open and waiting for somebody. Wherever there's going to be any, any chance of any people, you're going to find food stands around Cambodia. They do like their food. They, they like their beer as well. And that's a good thing. Yeah, the sun was shining right in my camera. I couldn't really see what I was trying to film there. But they had these big boats set up with nothing but ice and different kinds of cans of beer <laughs> stuck in there. I was trying to show you guys that they have these big wooden boats that act as coolers that they constantly, all throughout the day, fill up with ice to make sure you can get a nice cold beer whenever you want. Because that's another thing about Cambodia, and I think I mentioned this before, but there are no laws against... Uh, being out in public with, with a drink in your hand, you can walk down the street with a, uh, with you know, a six pack in a bag and an open beer in your hand, and nobody's gonna say anything. Nobody's gonna. It's not against the law. It's, it's actually okay. It's one of those laws back home I can never fathom. Like yeah, if you're being a nuisance in public, you don't want to be disturbing the peace, sure. But uh, back where I come from, anyway, the law states that you can't even have an open container in a public place. So you can't go outside and walk down your walk down the sidewalk in your own neighborhood with a beer, with an open beer, even if it's your first one, even if you're not drunk, even if you're just going for a, for a stroll. If they see you, they will fine you, give you a ticket, and I think that's a little bit ridiculous. But here, there's no problems like that at all. And, and the other thing I really like about the food here uh, during festivals like this is that there'll be vendors coming in and a lot of times they'll have food that you don't find commonly during other times of the year. They're almost like specialty foods that only come out 
during like uh, you know the water festival here or uh, Chung Ben or uh, Khmer New Year and so when you go down there and check out all the vendors you know it's easy to just kind of kind of look at them and go ah you know I see these every day but you, you're gonna find some that you don't see all the time here in Cambodia so it's always good to take an extra look they got these really cool uh, re really delicious I, I don't even know what they're called they're, they're they're not quite crepes but they're not quite thick enough to be pancakes and they don't taste like pancakes they're somewhere between a crepe and a pancake <laughs> I don't know what to say they're, but they're round and they're made on a griddle uh, with oil and 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 they're topped with different things and they're delicious they're just like I said they don't have that thickness or that heft of a pancake but they're not as thin as a crepe but they are very delicious and uh, halfway between a pancake and a crepe <laughs> so yeah you can find out those on there during these special uh, occasions there'll be one or two vendors always serving those so be on the lookout if you if you get a chance to be down there and I like the way they have all the uh, the vendors over there like near the side of the road that gives more room for people to walk not only on the sidewalk there but in the road because when it gets really really crowded uh, like at night you're gonna need all that room because all the people on that little on that sidewalk uh, yeah it's gonna get really crowded And you don't want that and of course they have a uh, uh, every so often they'll have first aid uh, station set up so if you do get a tummy ache if you're suffering from uh, maybe dehydration or you get a little hot you can step in there and they'll they'll take care of you there go there's some more of the fancy boats we're on the other side of the river now from when we came in those must be the VIP boats there. So they got the little mastheads on them. The dragon faces or whatever. I, I don't, they, they don't use those for racing, I don't believe. Because, uh, you know, when you're racing, it's all about the speed and, and those big heads they have on the front of those boats are for decoration. And I would assume, though, it'd be more difficult to get any speed because of the wind. And the resistance. So I saw a bunch of people gathered around uh, one particular spot there, and that's what we're going to go see. And then, that's the one I was telling you about. That uh, this seems to be an activity here, and uh, I wasn't able to get uh, close enough to to make it real clear. But uh, I'll try to let you know what's going on. Yeah, there we have. Uh, there's a big. Uh, almost like a ring and at the bottom of that ring it's filled with water and between one end and the other end they have a a pole a pole that sits horizontally uh, between the end of this thing and and as you can see they got two they got anyway sorry for the interruption I'm outside now but uh, yeah, they got two kids on this pole, which is horizontal over this tub of this big tub of water. And uh, at first, I didn't know what was going on, uh, but then uh, I, I had to stay and watch because nobody was moving. Everybody was uh, making noise, and some people were cheering. And then I saw that they had uh, like these uh, kid boxing gloves on while they're straddling this pole. And then I realized what was going on. A pugilist contest with children, which I approve of. Basically, they, they both slide out to the middle of this pole, and then on the count of three or whatever, they just take swings at each other, trying to punch each other in to knock them off into the water. <laughs> I think that is great. I think that is fantastic. Like I said, back in, back in the United States, people would be screaming about child abuse and uh, all the other kinds of things. But here it's like, yeah. For the entertainment of the masses, <laughs> get, get on this pole and and just swing for the fences at each other's face until one of you gets knocked in. I, I like that. And apparently a lot of other people liked it too because, uh, like I said, there was quite a crowd there that was just seemed to be there for that 
to watch that event unfold. Uh, but further on, we'll also see how they have uh, they have like these uh, a rope bridge, two rope bridges, uh, one on one side of the river and one on the other, and they'll put two young people to see which one can make it first without falling into the water. And they didn't, look, and those bridges didn't look like they were too stable either. I got, I, I'll say that. So yeah, even though there weren't any boat races going on, they did have other events down there while I was, at the time I was there. And it was nice to get down there, see all the crowds, see all the businesses. Everybody hanging out, having a good time. Can't go wrong there, you know. Lots of good food. Uh, of course, I, I had to... I had to do a voiceover for these events because, uh, I mean, the music down there was loud. Had several businesses that were trying to outdo one another when it came to the music. And, of course, you got the loudspeakers so people can announce different things. And those would squeak and squawk every, every so often. Again, that's my advice, man. Wherever you see a crowd, just stop and find out what's going on. You never know what you're going to... You never know what you're going to see here. And that was this one there was for the, uh, that rope bridge I was telling you about. Uh, seeing which of those uh, young people can make it across without falling in the water. Yeah, but everybody was having a good time. And uh, uh, that was yesterday. Uh, today, tonight, as I'm making this video, tonight is the last night of the water festival, so there should be fireworks. I believe they had them on the last night, some kind of fireworks show. If it's not raining, I'm going to go down there and see if I can get some uh, some videos of that. Not a whole lot, though. I don't know. People don't want to come on YouTube and watch uh, <laughs> watch fireworks. You can find that almost anywhere. But anyway, yeah, Bonham Took is always a good time. Lots of things to do, lots of things to eat, lots of people to see. And uh, even if you're not here for this one, maybe we can get you prepared for the next one. Maybe you'll be over here in time for that one. I certainly hope so. We'd love to see you uh, whenever, you, whenever you're getting ready to come over here to Cambodia. All right. Well, that'll do it for this one. Be sure to check out all my links down below. Like I said, I have links for uh, uh, PayPal and Kofi.com. My book links are down there. My other channel, Horror Reads, that link is down there. Links to other channels that are vlogging from this part of the world. They're always good ones. So be sure you uh, take advantage of those as well. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.